better known, as everyone knows here, as Race City USA with all the NASCAR drivers and the NASCAR teams. And Maureen Wirtz, that's where I want to bring you back in here because as we have a lot of these NASCAR drivers here, there are a lot of them current, but a lot of also legendary NASCAR drivers that call Mooresville <laughs> home. Yeah, Brian, we talk a lot about the cars here in Mooresville, but it's really the drivers who've helped make this city play such a big part in all of those NASCAR legends. Never quit trying. Never quit trying. It's a city known for its drivers. No, not the ones cruising on Main Street in Mooresville, but those who take a turn on the track. Mile after mile, around and around. That makes it two in a row for Allison and the Die Guard team. And one of those legends. Today's victory increased Allison's lead over Waltrip in the points race to 71 points. Is Bobby Allison. I didn't let that break my heart. There's another race coming. A 27-year career centered around one track in particular. That's the best racetrack in the world. Daytona. I can't put it into words, but, you know, I can sit right here and, th and think of how good it felt to be sitting in that car at Daytona. Though Bobby was in the driver's seat, his family often came along too. His wife, Judy, and their kids, Davey, Bonnie, Clifford, and Carrie. And after their win here in Richmond, they went to Dover, oh, Delaware the following oh, week and won again. Yeah. And two took after Dad, his oldest son, Davey. And, and Davey grabbed his little steering wheel and he said, Ned, Ned. And his other son, Clifford. Clifford's stories were mostly not true, but that was okay with Clifford. And it actually was okay with me, too because they were delightful. And though his career would be made up of record-breaking wins, there are some losses so great, he still feels them to this day. Racing taught me that you better really be careful because life is dangerous. In 1988, Bobby's career ended suddenly with a devastating crash. The head injury robbed me of incredible memory. But the ending of his racing career was nothing compared to the loss of his two sons. Horrible. He was a nice boy. Clifford died in a racing crash in August of 1992. And less than a year later, Davey passed away after his helicopter crashed in July of 1993. Davey from that big was my sidekick. For all his life, Bobby chased those once-in-a-lifetime wins. Here's Allison. He's won 84 races, including the Daytona 500, three times. Three 500s, but I also won three 400s, and then I won three 300s, and then I won three 150s. He's won on almost every track he's raced on. Today, that track is still there. Except for Martinsville Speedway. But on a day when I can get all the right stuff together, all right, this might be able to win Martinsville. In his eyes, a glimmer of a dream. In spite of that fact, there were more than a handful of Bobby Allison fans in the crowd. Not yet lost and not yet finished. Bobby has had an extraordinary career, and I have a little story for you. When we were shooting that interview, I asked him to record a special message for our chief investigative reporter, Jody Barr, who was a huge fan, and Bobby ended that little message by saying, thank you for being my friend, and that is exactly how he views everyone who's been rooting for him for his whole career. He views them as friends, and he says, when I win, they win too, and Brian, I have to tell you, there actually was a literal twinkle in his eyes when he was talking about Martinsville, and I was like, no, I bet you could do that, Bobby. <laughs> Hey, he can still try. What a legend he is and what a great heart he is, too. It shows right there. And uh, what a life mm -hmm. that he's led. And such a great story. And uh, I know you were telling me earlier that uh, Bobby Allison had also, he drives around to the grocery store and that sort of thing.